Hey fam, my name is PC Timmy, but you know that already. Uh, you're welcome to another episode of Founders Connect. Yeah, I have conversations with amazing entrepreneurs and operators in the African tech ecosystem. Today, I'm having a conversation with Ija Marsh, she's the co-founder and chief operating officer of Pivo Africa, Digital Bank for Trade in Africa. And they just got into YC. Um, before um, Ija Marsh started running Pivo, she was she had a career as a lawyer for a couple of years and then did a master's in software engineering. So it's a very interesting career that we're going to learn about and also learn about everything that she and her co-founder are building at Pivo. So make sure you stay. And it's what this video to the end. See you later. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm PC Timmy, a change maker, professional, and creative who is passionate about growing people and growing businesses. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and please always share my videos. It promises to always be impactful and insightful. Hi, lawyer, software engineer, <laughs> COO. What other titles do you have? I'm a human being. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Okay, also let's let's start from the beginning. Um, tell me about you growing up, where you grew up, family, what it was like, everything. Uh, growing up, well, I am the third of what well, we were five, then became four. Um, so I'm third child. Growing up, pretty normal, you know, Nigerian home. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Lagos, um, in a papa, then moved down to Festac. Um, working parents, uh, what else? Went to school normally, disciplinarian. My mom was a disciplinarian, <laughs> so you cannot afford to fail. Uh, just going through the ranks, ensuring that your head is down, you're doing the work. And yeah, my father used to say prayer of, you know, that's my children to take their rightful position in the, in the society. So you, it's all up to you to do everything you need to do to ensure that you take the rightful position in the society. Mm. So yeah, that's pretty much my, my childhood. What's your favorite memory? Of who exactly? My of childhood, my parents, or? Any of them, all of I them. I guess the, the one favorite each. one is when there was no headache, man. <laughs> <laughs> when you were sleeping and just waking up, and you know, all you need you to do to is to go to, <laughs> to be very honest. All you just need to worry about is, okay, I'm going to school, I'm coming back, there's food, there's this, there's every other thing is sorted out. It's just your priorities, but right now, Adulting is not, it's not his, it's a scam. <laughs> it's not a memory. <laughs> it's a scam. Well, yeah, here we are. Amazing. So tell me about school. What schools did you go to? Why did you decide to study law? What schools did I go to? So, um, Nazi school was like Corona, then Nazareth, then what? Then Those are like Radiance, the big private schools in Lagos, have you? Uh, the earlier ones, then <laughs> ended up in Radiance, then I went to Nigeria Navy Secondary School. Uh, yeah, then from there, there was this whole issue of, I wanted to be an engineer, to be very honest, okay. like my father. And then my dad was just like, you know, engineers don't make money. That's because he studied mechanical engineering and, you know, um, he joined his family business and, you know, all of that. And I was like, I want to be an engineer. And he was like, no, that's, you know, lawyers make more money than engineers. I was like, really? He was like, yeah. I was like, at least you're smart enough, so law would afford you the opportunity to know a bit about everything. So legit, that's why I even went to study law. That's because interesting it would because... give me a platform to know everything. Mm, my and because you earn more than being an engineer. Supposedly. But <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, 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 that's what happened. And I went to Lasso, Lego State University. I studied law. Well, as you can imagine, being in a, a state university with ASU and its strike, right now I'm not envious of people. That needs to be sorted out as fast as possible. So, you know, went through that whole situation of, you know, your, your mates or your friends in private uni just having their four years straight. And you're doing like you, you're doing, like, <laughs> Not necessarily because it's any you know, fault of yours, just it's a broken system. So after being done with that, went to law school, graduated. Did you practice law? In law yeah. Yes, I did practice law. First three years after um, graduating as a lawyer or, you know, um, being called to bar. Yeah, first three years, worked in traditional law firms. And the funny thing is that, you know, as a lawyer, the first thing that, you know, you do, well, this is a tip, the first thing you should do is to, like, go register your own business. You already mm. have the skills. It's all up to you how you intend to utilize the skills that you've acquired. So that's what I did from the get-go, registered my own IJ Aquila and Co. And, you know, <laughs> first set of clients, my friends and family. And from there, I also was working oh, so in you law wait, firm. So you, oh, so you're working in a law firm, but also yeah, running your own legal that. practition. Yes, right. you're allowed to do that. So, yeah, worked in, in, in various law firms, you know. Wasn't interested in rising up the ranks because, you know, the whole office politics of, you know, you're an associate, then to, for you to make partner, then the whole issue about salaries and structuring percentage, like it was too much of a headache. 
So great thing for me, everything was just going at the same time. When I have my clients, I have my clients. When work is great, well, it's going well. That's it. Been a so, journey. I mean, sound, that sounds interesting and sounds like you were okay and you're enjoying it. But why? Why masters in software engineering? Yes, I was okay and I was enjoying it. But um, something happened while I was working in, law, in one of the law firms where, you know, the, the well, few people know this story, but like where the, the partner, the um, one of the owners anyway, got very uncomfortable with me as a, would I say her staff or what it was? Because she would legit put me on cases where she knows for a fact that I knew people, mm. I don't know, like, you know, I was good enough to handle. And she got very, would I say, frazzled by that. And before I know it, she just started taking cases away from me. And at some point, it was like I was redundant in the mm. office. And I would ask, is there anything wrong? What's going on? She's like, no, no, nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong. And for the first time in my career, I felt very uncertain. I didn't want to be subjected to somebody's whims and mm. caprices, right? Like when I decide that, hey, I'm good, then I'm good. Or, well, hey, I don't like you anymore, and that's it. So that was the first time I, was, I felt the fear of uncertainty in my career. And I was like, you know what? This is not going to happen to me again. Luckily for me, when that happened, um, I helped a friend with a project, with a contract, an engineering contract where um, they were meant to like bid for, you know, a federal government contract. So I, my friend was like, you know, you know all these things, like you're, you're, you're very technical minded. Help me look over this contract, advice accordingly and all of that, which I did. And luckily for me, everything went great with the, with the I didn't even know who the, the, the client was. I'm finding the client was like, who well, like went over this contract yeah. that, you know, we need this sort of lawyer to work with us. And my friend was just like, hey, that ah, the people that you helped them with their contract, though, they are looking for a lawyer. Are you interested in this job? Or like, you know, to go work as an in-house legal counsel? So yeah, why not? Sure. And that's how I transitioned from like a typical law firm to like in-house legal counsel role. Right. Um, I worked in Gilmore Engineering for about six years. That was from 2014 to, yeah. So three years law yeah, yeah. and then three, six years in-house in -house. legal. Yeah. So yeah, that's how I transitioned to my corporate, corporate law practice. <laughs> And yeah, working with um, Israelis, you know, very, they're, 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 you know, when people say they're one of the smartest set of people on the world, or rather, right yeah, on this earth, yeah, they are, they really are. And working with them is like, you cannot afford to mess up with them. Mm. Like, you have to know your onions. So, for a fact, you know, being in that sort of role where I was like the only legal counsel providing them with astute legal services and everything, I always had to be on my A game. Research, research, research. You know, if I was to get to a point, they'd be like, you're going alone. And so when you're going alone to do anything, better make sure that you're not going to sink a billion dollar or rather a billion naira, a multi-billion naira company in Nigeria. And yeah, that was like one of the best experiences that made me grow as an individual to believe that I could like, you know, head anything I wanted to, mm. you know, to do. So, what was yeah. your, what would you say was your favorite lesson that you took out from your time from, at Gilmore? From Gilmore, ah, to be honest, uh, it's a matter of, it's better to be, sometimes better to be smart than to be right. I don't know what they meant by that. <laughs> but I, what's the, 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 under, the underlying message of that is that always make sure that you have done your research. Always make mm. sure that you've done the hard work to know what you're saying. Don't be caught stupid, you know, saying things stupidly. And I think that has also translated to my, my personal life or my work life now because I'm always very upset when people haven't done their research or they haven't, mm. like, taken the extra time to, like, just do your job, right? And, you know, it, you know, being in a leadership role now, I'm, I'm learning patience, right? But at the same time, you, you choose to believe that, you know, you hire the right people around you and get out of their way yeah. to do their jobs, right? But at the same time, you have to strike a balance that sometimes some people actually just want you to be in their way. Oh, you've hired them, yes. But at the same time, they still want you to like, okay, do this, do that. Oh yeah, I'm still learning, I'm still learning. Yeah, so now answer my question. Why software engineering? Because, I mean... Why software? After nine years of doing law in-house and why? getting legal oh. for it, so... Uh, why software? It's software development, anyway. Development. Yeah, it's software development. So, um, I had my private legal practice, right? Where most of my clients were startups. Right. Helping them get incorporated. Helping them negotiate their deals with their investors. Helping them with policies and you know, regulatory um, compliance and the likes. And which got me very interested in like, you know, this tech thing. 
apart from the paper pushing as a lawyer that I'm helping you to do, what else? Because, you know, I'm always very intrigued when, like, you're, you're like coding, right? <laughs> and, you know, luckily for me, um, um, apart from that experience as a lawyer, I have a cousin, you know, he's in the game. He's in, uh, you should know him, Gossi. Okay. Um, he's my cousin. And, you know, growing up with him and everything, seeing firsthand, like, how basically tech changed his own life. Mm. Right from, like, out of secondary school, and he just delved into it immediately. And every time I'll visit him, and he's just doing one next one big thing after the other after, I'm like, ah, Omo, I really, <laughs> I told him, that I keep telling him, like, you're the blueprints. I really want to see how to go, like, go about this thing. But, you know, being, you know, upfront and personal, all of that, and also being a you know lawyer helping the you know the startups and and all of that, I was like, this is very interesting. I really want to know how else I could be in the tech space. Now I keep saying this though, luckily for me, <laughs> luckily for me, I have a friend Amara. Um, you know he he works with the Yaradua Foundation, Yaradua Center in Abuja. And he was just like, you know, I met him once. I can't even remember how I met him, but like we just kicked it off with conversations and everything. And he was like, you know, you're smart. Like, you know, he will invite me to all their you know, programs and stuff like that. And I'm always very curious and asking him questions. And I got to a point, he was like, he called me one day. And I was like, ah, that's, um, you're always asking me about this tech thing. Come, come and see what it's about. So I have a project. We've been commissioned by the MacArthur Foundation right. to build a software. When um, Buhari became president and everybody was all about fighting corruption. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've been commissioned by the MacArthur Foundation to build a software that will track retail corruption in the administration of criminal law justice. I know that's a mouthful, but like the whole idea was that, you know, look at criminal law justice in Nigeria, right? The way things should work, how it ought to work in Nigeria. For example, if, let me just use you, if you get arrested in Nigeria, the law says that you should um, at least be brought before a court of law within 24 to 48 hours, at mm -hmm. least at the court that is closest to the police station where you are. And you know for a fact that's not the case in mm -hmm. Nigeria. Most times you find that people are there awaiting trial, waiting to be, you know, to be charged. Yeah. And they spend years. They even spend more years than the crime that they've got, like the, the punishment for the crime they've yeah. committed, right? And one of the, the, the disadvantages of, those, of that especially is that people actually get missing in prisons. Mm -hmm. And because we don't have a proper record management system in Nigeria, that's how people just go missing and eventually mm -hmm. die and nobody knows anything about them. Mm -hmm. So that's how that should work. Like, so the software was meant to like help. Uh, it was meant to be like a reporting tool right. for lawyers, users, like any user that has experienced any of this um, infringement and just report and to be escalated and resolved as fast as possible. And that was the, the grand idea of the project. And yeah, he was like, you know, come on board as a legal processes consultant and come and see, come and use your legal knowledge, translate it to software and see how it will be translated to the people that will use it. And like, that whole process was very eye-opening for me. Mm. I was like, you know, basically creating something out of nothing. Not necessarily nothing, but basically out of what yeah. was in my head or what was in the books, right? And how to translate it to something that the software could actually, like, break down. Mm -hmm. And you go through all the process flows of how to, like, you know, report the incidents and resolve them and all of that. And also having to do stakeholder management, having to present to the judges, the lawyers, like, basically anybody that would have to use the app. And I was like, yes, now I know what I want to do. <laughs> Software development seems very, very interesting. Like, this is something that, you know, makes me research, makes mm. me want to know more. So I was like, after that project, I was like, yeah, I, I want to go get my master's in software development. And I just, re I kept researching and, you know, conversion courses came up. Like, okay, intensive one year of what software development is about. And yeah, I applied to uh, so many schools. <laughs> they all gave me, offered me admission, but I went to the University of Glasgow for obvious reasons. What are the obvious reasons? Obvious reasons, because it's one of the top tier schools here in the UK. And, you know, again, at this stage in life where, um, you know, I've worked and all of that, and it's more, more about connections for mm. me than what the than certificate just, was yeah. going to do for me. It's yeah. a matter of, like, establishing myself now with all my acquired experiences and knowledge and how to, like, you know, um, utilize it. So that's why I chose the University of Glasgow. And, yeah, I, I went ahead and wrote my story, my purpose, and every, all my, you know, <laughs> statement of purpose and all of those things. And everybody offered me, you know, admission. And I was like, you know what? I'm going for University of Glasgow. 
blocking out one year of my life to face this you know i'm not going to be distracted because anyway i struggle with focus mm. so i'm like the only way i'm going to do this is that i'm not i'm not working i am not going to work i'm not going to do that i am just going to focus in school do what i need to do by the grace of god pass excellently <laughs> and yeah so do you code now there. do i code yes i do but i'm not great at it to be <laughs> honest i'm not great at it because I've just come to realize that that's just one aspect of maintaining the whole system. Mm. That's the truth. Yeah, coding, the engineering, the core technical part of things is, yeah, it's the engine room, right? But the beauty about tech that I've seen is that there are so many other areas that create the whole ecosystem, mm. right? So where one aspect is down, it affects every, it has a ripple effect on every other, you mm -hmm. know, would I say arm and leg and all of that, right? So every other, every other aspect is just as important as the coding. Coding is just, to be very honest, coding is just, it's it, like, like my cousin would say, it's just, he will say it's laborers work according to him. <laughs> he will say it's laborers work. Why? Because you have to get the logic right. You have to get the implementation right. You have to get the monitoring, evaluation, everything right, security right. Everything has to be right for you to say, yes, I have a successful product, right? Mm -hmm. So that's just what it is. Hey fam, so here's a short story. When I was moving to the UK, I thought I was moving, moving. So Nigeria has not been to me for a very long time. So I did not renew my rent, gave out all my furniture, even cleared out my bank account. But I realized not so long after that I was really playing myself. I mean, I have way too many times in Nigeria to just think that I will just up and just go like that. So I'm having to visit more often for work or to see family. Oh, I have clients in Nigeria that I need to pay me now. It's kind of stressful juggling both, but I'm beginning to like it, especially the part about managing my finances in both countries. Because my UK income, I then can use it to sort out my UK bills. And when expenses arise in, in, in Naira, in Nigeria, I can use the money I have in Naira to either send, send to family or even like spend when I'm in Lagos so that I don't have to like exchange money. For instance, a friend of mine in Canada needed money um, a couple of weeks ago. And I'm like, I don't have money in pounds to share, but I had money now. So I used AfriChange, which is a remittance product that facilitates money transfer between the Canada and Nigeria corridor. I used AfriChange to send money from my Naira account to his Canadian bank account. And when he was ready to refund me, my friend sent me money from his Canadian bank account back to my Naira account with the same AfriChange app. AfriChange is available as a website, um, a web app, so you can sign up and send money online. Or you can also download the app on iOS and Play Store. And it's really good. Best rate, fast speed, good customer service. Ugh. Anyway, so now when people ask me, please, where do you live? I'm like, you know what? I think I actually shuffle both Lagos and London. Stressful, but I'm loving it. Anyways. End of story. Back to the video. <laughs> That's just what it is. That's amazing. So let's talk about Pivo. How did you meet your co-founder? And how did the idea for the company come about? Ah, Pivo, Pivo, Pivo. So how did I meet Inkiru? Inkiru, Inkiru gets crashed to my birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> As a classic co-founder story. Yeah, Inkiru gets crashed my, my, my birthday party in, what? I, I think it was my 26th birthday party. Yeah. My 26th birthday party. And funny thing is that we have a picture where she was right by my, my side. And I didn't even know her. Somebody just, you know, I knew her. I knew the friend that she came with, right? And it was like, oh, meet my friend. And I'm like, okay, cool. And the Kiri sat down next to me. And there's a picture. And I'm like, every time I show her, I'm like, who would have thought that years yeah, down the line, it would now be me and you that would be running things. Like, and we always laugh about it. And yeah, after that, you know, we had like, you know, we're in a circle of friends. And just realized that, oh, we have the same interests, we have the same taste in certain things, or oh, we like to build things together. Even prior to Pivo, we've run a couple of businesses, like, you know, lifestyle businesses, other things. And there was, there's one that's actually very instrumental to Pivo called SourcePro. Mm. It was a source to procurement platform for agro commodities, which will source agro commodities for exportation out of Nigeria. And it was while we're doing that, that, you know, again, the issue of financing right we'll get a PO for oh, tons of cashew or whatever you can think of that people will want to export and will like be, be running to like you know fulfill it and by the time we found a farmer that has like the, the harvest that you're meant to carry the produce to wherever the point of um, collection is it's that you know the truck driver that we've gotten ah madam i don't get this to do this <laughs> ah madam i need to hire one more truck ah madam my truck has broken down here i need to transfer the so it's all these little 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 things and we would like go out of our way to like bring our money from our own pockets just to ensure that it's fulfilled right and the question was just like why that you guys can't do it yourselves why do you have to revert to us that we need you to deliver aren't mm -hmm. we paying you for your services and you 
at the end of the day, it's just a matter of this kind of sort of monies, right? The so-called small monies that they need to like move from point A to point B are really accessible, right? Right. And at the end of the day, it's either they're liable commercial banks, either they're just too small for commercial banks because commercial banks are targeting all them, you know, the 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 MTNs and the likes that you know are big enough to give them probably a thousand percent ROI if they think so, and yeah. And the small guys are just left, you know, unattended to. At the end of the day, either you find them like going to family and friends as usual to get loans from, or they end up being at the mercy of you know, loan sharks and the likes. So we just kept on saying, there's a problem here, there's a problem here. Even in Kiri too, uh, prior to people in Kiri worked in Cobra 360 and her role there, also having to deal with like the truck drivers that were within their network and having to do favors for them. Even myself, while I was in Gilmore, you know, seeing that um, Gilmore is a civil engineering company, right? And we had like a lot of infrastructure um, projects with the federal government. And we had like our own network of suppliers right. that would supply like, you know, the, the, the materials needed for the, the projects. And the same thing of like, oh, I'm not liquid enough to do this. I'm not liquid enough to do that. Again, I would find myself doing personal favors just to make sure that uh, everybody delivers and the project is, you know, on time. Because when they submit their, their invoices, there's a payment, you know, would I say a payment um, tenor for it. Mm -hmm. 30 days after submission, 20 days after submission, sometimes it goes as far as 90 days after submission before you get paid. So what now happens in between? You're there sitting, hoping to God that, okay, or somebody will do me a favor. So that was how basically people came alive that, you know, we need to solve these, you know, immediate liquidity issues mm. for these customers because... That's, they are the drivers of any economy, right? Mm. So if they are not doing any work, what happens? Everybody is just going to sit back and suffer. So that's why people was born to help solve. And so, how does issue. people solve the issue now? How does people solve the issue now? So, like you mentioned before, people is a digital bank for trade. However, right now we are a people, um, digital bank for African freight carriers. Does that differ? How does it differ? Now, the grand vision is to be the bank for trade, meaning that any um what i say actor any sme actor that is um essential in any supply chain right you don't need to have any financing issues mm. whether it comes to access to working capital whether it comes to like you know even connections of you know let's say cross cross selling of your services to the other smes within the pivot network you won't have any issues right now the difference is the freight carriers are the truck drivers you see the logistics service providers the funny thing is that they're the first point of call or first port of call anyone for movement of cargo mm. right from when the goods are cleared it has to move out of the port to wherever the port you know the destination is right and you have to engage their services now the reason why they are most important is because if they're not there the goods will stay in the port right and you're now um, liable to demorage that's already an additional cost to whoever is the owner of the goods after you've spent a lot of money to import those goods into for, mm. for starters nigeria right now, movement from, um, let's say, the ports to wherever the destination is, right? If they're not engaged as quickly as possible, who knows, the goods could be perishable. Now you've incurred another loss, right? And now you've not engaged them. What if they're not like, you know, you thought for a fact that you needed one or two trucks to move? What if you now need three and four? Mm. When that happens, you, now know, you don't have money because you budgeted for one and two. And that's where people now comes in, like all these instances or use cases I've given, right? If you haven't done this, people want to help you to at least not incur so at any point of your process point, that you exactly. need financing. That people is there to help. Exactly. Yeah. That's to ensure that your supply chain doesn't break. Mm. That sounds really dope. Yeah. What has been the most challenging part of running people in the last year plus? Two years? Two years? No, nah, come on. It's just a year. <laughs> <laughs> One year. It's just a, it's about a year now. It's about a year. Uh, well, well, no, P, we, no, we went into operations fully in October. So, October yeah, 2021. Yeah, 2021, yes. Yeah, so oh, so it's less than a year. It's less than a year, okay. to be honest. I guess it's about a year where we were toying with the idea, trying to flesh it out and all of that. But the moment we hit the ground running, that was in October last year. And what has been the hardest part? The hardest part, to be honest, is, is, is just starting, mm. right? Um, the, the issue of like the what ifs, the you know, doubts, the fear. But the beauty I've learned is that sometimes just do it afraid. Mm. Do it when you don't have all the answers. The truth is that the answers will come up as you need them, right? And yeah, um, the hardest thing again is just ensuring that you have the right people that can key into your vision 
to execute you know that vision because you know as founders we don't have all the answers to be honest yes we have that vision of we want people to be the you know the i like saying this of like when you think of Africa, you know Afrexim Bank or mm -hmm. Nexim Bank, all this import export bank, right? I want people to be the digital version of that. So that's my own definition, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's my own definition. Um, so yeah, uh, the whole idea is that have the right people to 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 execute their vision for you, and it's been quite difficult, you know, when getting your team right. Getting your team right is important to get your team right. That's part of the growing pains. Um, another difficult aspect I would say is, you know, when it comes to people, again, people believing in your vision and uh, availing you with the right resources. It's really nice and cute when you can bootstrap and mm. go as far. That is an amazing story, right? But we all know the, let's say, the, the, the economy that we play in. Right now we're in Nigeria alone, but the plan is to expand across Africa. But yeah, um, you, you have to have all your resources in place to do an excellent job mm. you know sometimes you can't even build your team right because you just don't have the money yet to pay the right people that you know be very instrumental to that growth that you want to achieve so yeah those, those, those are part of the the stories but while, we, while we're wading through the water <laughs> okay, so we just talked about the the challenger power has been some of in the last less than a year the mm. key milestones that have made you guys feel like yeah we're on to something we're going to do this shit. <laughs> To be honest, I think the first time we, th we felt validation was uh, when we said, okay, you know what, we're not going to open this up to investors. And we started pitching. And when we now like got first check on board first. Was the first check literally the first check? Yeah, first check was the first check. And we're like, oh, my. <laughs> like, <laughs> somebody actually, somebody else apart from me and you, hoping actually, that we're not high on our own supply, <laughs> <laughs> right? Somebody else actually sees this, okay? Nice, nice, nice. Then another um, aspect, then every other, like, you know, every other investor started coming on board, right? Then it was a matter of, okay, because we went to market with our um, credit product, Pivo Capital. And we grew that, the goal, then the initial goal was, okay, we should disburse a million dollars in capital and make revenue from it. Then yes, we'll know that we have hit that. And we got to one million, and then Kerry is like, Kijama, we should make it too. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Can we just celebrate this win? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. I should like, Kijama, let's just double Let's just double it because that shows that, yeah, people really like need what yeah. we what, 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 what are seven, right? And we doubled it. And we're like, okay, now I think we're ready for, you know, to the, the seed round. I think that was like meant to be the, the pointer to when mm. we would open up our seed round. And uh, what I say, what I say, unfortunately, around that period is when everybody started talking about, you know, the winter out there, the global economic meltdown and all of, oh God, people are dramatic, <laughs> <laughs> right? And that whole thing. But the truth is, peace here, yeah? once you know that you're building something great, once every other person can see what you're building is a necessity, mm. no winter, no, he no hell, no high water oh, she will come and like, you know, would I say drown the fire that is driving, you know, you and your company and your product, mm. right? I just needed to say that, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so that was the first signal that, okay, we're ready for our seed round. But again, it's just to put in the work, put in the work, put in the work. So like I mentioned, we went to market with Pivo Capital. Then we decided that we're going to, you know, roll out another product, which is Pivo Business. Basically, this is like the, is the foundation, mm. right? But... Again, I think we, we, we for, for sake of, of stickiness, we went to markets with people capital, meaning we should have done the foundational one, which is people business, you know, accounts, now. then, you know, it would have been a nice add-on for people capital. Mm. But we did the reverse just to see, you know, what was going yeah. on. Because the truth is, right now people are saying, oh, you should have probably done the accounts first, gotten your customers, then, ha you know, having the um, people capital as a nice add-on for your, your customers. But in the Nigerian context, in the African context, it's money first. It's money first. People need money to work. Mm -hmm. People need money to grow. People need money to at least show, like you know, proof of whatever business they're doing. Mm -hmm. Is there's no point? I keep telling people right now, like there's no point for one business having ten accounts with no money inside. Mm -hmm. How are they going to make that money? If there's nobody willing to give them the money to at least show, like help them make the more money that they want to make and mm -hmm. at least put money into their accounts. 
So the goal now is that we want to be the ones to provide that money for them to work, to earn money. I bring back that money and put it back in people, to people business, right? <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that's, it might work in every other part of the world, but in Africa, we do need the money to work first and foremost mm. and make sure that the, the work that we're doing reaps, you know, at least yields fruits and we can show it to the world. So, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So first check first, then hitting $1 million and $2 million and being able to roll out more products. Yeah. You didn't mention YC. It's just ah, you know YC YC story is actually funny. We applied to YC last year. Um, yeah, we applied to YC la last year for the winter the winter batch, and you know we're so certain that we had a great product on our hand. We are putting the work and all of that. Applied all of that like great like it was the, the sense that would have gotten in the winter batch was there, right? But we didn't get in. And it was like, okay, we didn't get into YC, but at the end of the day, I promise you, your work, let your work, in, you know, the, the Latin version of it is res ipsa loquito, like let your work or the fact speak for itself. Mm. Once you have a great product, once your numbers are speaking, nothing is going, that no, nobody is going to tell you no. Mm. Or just maybe they just don't know well enough, in the market well enough, that's why they're saying no. Mm. But if everything checks out, people will back you. Mm. Anyway, we didn't get into YC last year, but we kept on doing the work. And we decided to like, you know, we rolled out people business to just doing what we're doing best, right? And, you know, we saw the application for the summer batch. You know, I, I asked the curator, are we applying? The was like, oh, Greg, I'm not in the mood for, <laughs> I'm not in the mood for another rejection. I was like, yeah, same here. Let's just keep doing the work. Then, I, I saw the tweets, but there was somebody in YC that tweeted that they would like to see more female-founded mm. companies applying. And Nikira saw it. And to her, like, she was like, she saw it and before that she just messaged me, Jamal, I've applied again for us. <laughs> I'm like, I just told her, are you ready for us to go through this again? She's like, mm, if it works, it works. If not, we continue, Abby. I was like, no, wahala. Fill out your own part of the application and we leave it to God. And which we did. Five nights, we had an, um, funny thing, even before she even finished the application, or what, we got a personal email from YC saying that, you know, our application the last time was actually one of the best mm. in this, but, you know, we didn't get in there, that we should try, okay. we should reapply. I know I saw it, I was just like, again, are we ready for this? <laughs> you know, there's this heartbreak that comes when you're wanting something, and, it doesn't and you've show. done everything. Like, there's something called the all efforts rule, mm. where you have put in everything. And at the end of the day, it's like, wasn't it good enough? You start questioning yourself, questioning every other thing around it. And to be honest, I wasn't ready for that because I'm like, it's tasking enough being a founder, trying to like, you know, being pulled in different directions. It's like, it's going crazy. Through. Yeah. And to go through this emotional heartbreak again, like setting yourself up, I'm like, huh. I'm like, okay, okay, I'll apply. I'll do it again. I'll fill my part. Like, we'll do everything we need to do. Fine, you know, it's interview set up. We attended the interview. They asked us all the questions. We answered adequately everything. And then we got a call back um, with um, one particular person and he was just like, you know, you know, you guys are solid founders. Your products are great. However, you know, right now for the YC thesis, you know, lending companies are, there are a lot of lending companies according to them. I remember, like I told you, we went to market with that people capital yeah. product. That's the one that had gained traction. That's the one that had shown that, you know, we actually had a product that people wanted, mm. right? That was, we, would I say we had achieved like the, we had achieved like the, 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 the product, product yeah, market fix, yeah. right? And they're like, you have another product, which is people business, which is like the accounting, um, uh, rather the bank account side of things, payment side of things, everything side of things, right? How would you like to like bring that to the forefront, push that and see what you can do with it? Are you guys open to doing that? <laughs> You can have it so they're like, yeah, sure. Like we're always very open to taking up challenges. And yeah, mm -hmm. we'll definitely do that if that's what's, you know, it's yeah. being required. And yeah, you know, finally got the message. Hey, you got into YC, all of that. <laughs> and Kira just forwarded, like, I don't know, she forwarded the message to me and all of that. I was just like, wow, we finally achieved this thing. Additional validation. And yeah, that, that is the YC story, to be very honest. To <laughs> That's be a very, very interesting very story, especially that you guys did not necessarily want to apply again. But you're like, you know, let's just do it. 
and yeah, look at it. Yeah, to be honest, yes, that's how it happened. That's amazing. I mean, so you guys play in a very niche sort of like industry, right? It's for trade, right? Mm-hmm. It's not something that's popular. It's not just everyday consumers. So how are you guys finding your customers? How are you finding your users? Mm-hmm. So the great thing is that we didn't come into this space as nov- as novices, right? Mm-hmm. Inkiri has a history with Cobra 360. Prior to that, Inkiri founded Jalo, which she sold to Cobra 360. Yeah. And it was all part of like the, the, the plan. She it was rather Jalo was acqui hired. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so she had that wealth of experience. Personally, I come from a, a family of transporters. My family's business, Aquarium Motors Limited, it has existed since 1964. Wow. Yeah. It's almost like sharing bed in Nigeria. Literally. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it's a family business passed on from my grandfather to, like, my dad and his brothers. And, like, you know, I have cousins that mm. have also taken up the role. So, I have been, me, myself, I've personally been at the forefront of seeing what the space is like. Mm. You know, having trucks, sending out trucks, all the wahala that comes with, you know, if there's no insurance the driver running away after an accident like all the highs and the lows right having to see you know where there's pilferage of whatever cargo they're carrying having to see where you know then when nigeria was really cash heavy and you know probably they handed over let's say for example 100k to the driver the driver doesn't return with the money because he has left with the money right you know being at the forefront of all of that and i guess it's from our own wealth of experience we came into Pivo and we're like, okay, draw from your own network of, you know, whether it's from Jalo, your Jalo phase or from your Kobo phase, Ijima, you draw from, whether it's from your family phase, even from my Gilmore phase, where I was in charge of the commercial contract management for a network of SMEs, that were, you know, suppliers, right? Whoever it is that you can reach out to that can probably refer you to somebody Oh no, we're doing the work, we're calling every day, we're going to people's offices to see, okay, this is what we can do. We're pitching, literally pitching every single second of the day to get our customers. So nobody's sitting down in the office, you know, with the AC blowing them. And we're, we're really in the field getting our customers. So literally, that's how we get our customers. And luckily for us too, now that we have investors that see the work we're doing, they're also making it easier for us by also introducing us to who they know. And that's how we've been able to do it so far. That's amazing. None of you are technical. So how did you guys manage to build the technical side of things? To None of us are technical. I mean, <laughs> were you the one? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, go, let's go back. So how I, the question is, technical. right. So tell me about it. So who built like the very first MVP? The MVP. Did you guys have to code it yourself? The did funny you thing, hire someone else? The funny thing, the funny thing is that we, me and Kiru, then our set of engineers, we all sit down every day. So you guys had engineers from day one? No, well, yeah, we yeah, 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 we had help, definitely, definitely. We had to hire like you know other people to build out the MVP. Right. Well, literally, like in Kiru did the product roadmap, and I had to go through like you know building out the use cases and the processes flow, making sure that the UX UI designer is like you know he's thinking through things. At the same time, you know whoever the front end engineer is building according to whatever design is like. Literally, we're in all the meetings every time. So, yeah, it's, it's been a bit of, like, you know, help from other engineers. But at the same time, at least in Kiru is more technical than I am. I'm just, in, I'm new in the game. But at the same time, my knowledge from my experience building out that software and also from my master's degree, it's all, all played a, an important role. That makes role. sense. So you guys didn't even need, like, you just needed people to actually code. But all the other processes involved in, like, understanding the product and the process for a roadmap was done by you guys. Yes. That's amazing. That's mm-hmm. That's pretty dope for two, man. That's like, that's really dope. Yep. Tell, me, tell me what your biggest lesson has been in the last 10 months of running people. The biggest lesson, the biggest lesson is, you know, again, be, be, be your greatest cheerleader. Be your greatest cheerleader. Don't wait for anybody to... Yeah, val- external validation is, is nice. Mm. It, it shows that, again, and I've said this before, like, you know, high on your own supply, <laughs> right? It's, but there's a clear difference where you believe in yourself, you're doing whatever that needs to be done, and somebody out there can see clearly that, yes, you're actually on the right path. So don't lean on that external validation so much. Don't get so hung up if there's a no, right? Just put your head down, stay humble, keep doing what you're doing. End of the day, the work will speak for itself. That is my greatest lesson so far. Yeah, 
that's, that's really dope again. I've said really dope so many times because I'm I'm usually I'm I'm impressed. I mean, we've known each other before, yeah. uh, but hearing you tell your story, it's yeah. more eye opening than just like reading your profile or reading like an article. I'm like, okay, and like I see it, see it, see it, see it. See it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really amazing. What are you looking forward to the most in what people becomes in the next three to five years? Huh, what am I looking for? Huh, I'm looking for retirement. The, I'm looking for no, 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 no. no. <laughs> to be honest, to be honest, I want us to first of all, foremost, achieve that out of Nigeria, the international expansion, mm. right? The whole idea is to be the digital bank for trade in Africa. Africa. Yeah, that's the goal, right? So I want to see that the the real, the, let's say the the real the real ways that we are now building out of Nigeria and see it connect across the various countries and know that for, for a starter or for, for a fact that we have built the financial operating system that is connecting each country for trade. So that's when I know that yes, we have actually accomplished this thing. Yeah. So that's what I am excited about, to be honest. When you, when you talk about your journey from law to being an in-house counsel, to doing software and, and development, to meeting in crew, it feels like it's a, it's a part that makes sense. Like you can say, oh, different things are coming together yeah. to get me to where I am now. Does, does that seem accurate to you? Or you just felt like, ah, it was just vibes and <laughs> Vibes and shallow. <laughs> <laughs> ah, please, do you know the meaning of my name? No, I don't. Please tell me. My name is Ijoma, meaning a beautiful journey, mm. meaning a good journey meaning uh, a safe journey, right? Life is a journey. It comes with the highs, its lows, everything. But my name says that it will be a good one at the mm. end of it all. So, I have come to ac- <laughs> I've come to accept that everything I have been through is just preparing me for the next phase. Everything makes sense right now mm. as a founder. It makes mm. sense why I had to... I wanted to study engineering. Who, who would have thought that I had an idea I would have gone into software development? Mm. My, my father, like my, my parents, they're late now, but like Sorry. they wouldn't have believed that, that so I had an agent would actually have connected it. But I did. Mm. But yeah, like, you know, the whole hassle of being a lawyer, then, you know, the corporate aspect of things, then software development, and now finally here. Right now, my role is a mush of everything. Mm. I'm not lost in... I'm, I can say for a fact I'm not lost in any meeting. Mm. You can drag me to a technical meeting. I can sit, I can listen, I can understand, I can process and understand it in my own way, give it back to you how I understand it and it will make sense. Mm. As long as the objective, the overall success is being achieved, I know. You can drag me to the legal, whatever, when it comes to like negotiating, the, you know, whether it deals with investors, whether it deals with like strategic partners that are enabling us to do our business as it is. Like I'm not lost on that front too. And also, like, you know, again, being at the helm of affairs, being a CEO, having to deal with the various departments that exist in PIVO, again, I've, I've, it, my, what I say, my experiences has led me up to this point, and everything just makes sense. So, yes, it's, it's all connected, and that's the truth. It's it amazing. Is. I think there's a lot of lessons to learn from your journey. Um, really? Yeah. Tell me one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one is allow people good cash or party. You just say. <laughs> You, you never know where you'll meet your co-founder <laughs> and, and, and be in an amazing that's business. A, that's a nice one. That's yeah, a nice that's, one. that's one. That's um, a nice one. I think, is, I think another one is also just the, the miracles that come from just trying, hmm. right? Like, oh, we think that we have a nice idea. Let's, let's see how far it can get us. Hmm. We've already gotten a rejection. Mm, well, you know what? Let's just go ahead and apply again. I'm going to tell you, no, keep pushing. <laughs> exactly. See, you know, the funny thing is that, yeah, there will be a lot of no's. Ah, no, no. You For know, a beautiful day, it's always going to be a lot see, of no's. You see, like, see my laptop there? A lot of tabs. Out. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know how many things we've applied to? But just when you get that yes, it just, it, just, it just opens. You know, I remember again, I remember that excitement when we got that first check. Like, yes, and in how many days, check was in the bank, case closed. And we can, we can now like speak to other investors, like, ah, we already have this. And that was like a signal of, ah, we have this problem back to us. Like, okay, we might as well just go on the journey. But the truth is, just keep on trying. Don't let the know might hurt, it might weigh you down, you might take a guess things, but find the energy and get back on track, to be honest. Yeah. I think that's a really good note to actually end this video. <laughs> I also have a feeling that if we keep on, I'll just keep on, just dropping, dropping, dropping. 
dropping, <laughs> dropping it. So it's, let's let's move on. Uh, but thank you so much for having this conversation, Rami. It's, thank you. It's a pleasure to finally meet you, to get to know you. She has met me before. Like, like, like get to know you. Okay. Yeah. Just like um, really understand your journey. Um, and I'm so proud of what you're on Kira Beauty. And I, I remember when we talked, when we We've met. We've been begging how she knows why we're begging. <laughs> No, but like, because at that time I was like, oh, we're building this, but it wasn't really clear. And then next thing's like, pa, 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 pa. And all I see, I see it on Twitter. I'm not taking care I see your congratulations. So um, I'm very excited to see how far you guys have come. But more importantly, looking forward to the amount of. I, I know those women. They're my friends. So, um, they've been in my house. So, like, I, I know them, know them. Um, and also just like getting inspired. I think what makes me read, I was telling the first person I interviewed that today, uh, Miriam of Oja. I was like, today I'm interviewing three women and I'm so excited. Because, really? Yeah. There was a time where. I could pick maybe only two women I've interviewed out of like 30. And I used to, it's a boss man, I'm like, God. Mado. Yeah. <laughs> but now, like, even, even unconsciously, I'm just beginning to like gravitate that more women founders are gravitating towards me. And I'm so excited because I'm a woman myself. It's a great so when thing. I see people like me who are doing amazing, I'm, I'm ecstatic. And I know that it's the same thing for other women entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. other women operators. You don't even have to be a founder to be inspired by your journey. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to be a co founder. Or oh, a C level executive. You can even be a lawyer and say, ah, I don't know what I'm doing in my life, but right now I'm doing law. But who knows? <laughs> For the first because if your mind could but ten true. years to get here, funny, maybe funny I would land somewhere else and make it. This you just said, this thing you just said, funny thing is true. I remember one of our like you know one of our team members right and she just she reached out to us and she's just like I just saw a post story and something is just telling me that I need to work with you guys. Mm. Because you know, the, it's a rare opportunity to find women at the helm of affairs, women that are technical, women that are two new. women who just <laughs> only two. I, just, I guess I don't know whether she to wash us, but like the wash, it, 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 it works. works. <laughs> <laughs> it works, but like again, the whole fact of like um, right now, I keep I keep telling Kiru, right? Every day is not it's not it's not Christmas for us, right? That that tough days. But I remind her now that it might be an unfair responsibility on us. But well, right now, the reality that is that this is bigger than us right now. Mm. It's no longer in Kira and Ijoma. It's not in Kira and Ijoma versus investors in Kira and Ijoma and the obligations that they have to their team in Kira and Ijoma, the obligations that they have to other women out there. That, and even your users as well. Yeah. That, you know, believe that oh, if women could do this thing, I can do it. Yeah. So we have opened that possibility. The whole idea is for us to keep shattering the... Well, whether it's glass or concrete, anything, we shall keep on doing it. And yeah, right now we're grateful for YC, the first Nigerian company, uh, female-led, all-female-led company in YC from Nigeria. That's a great deal for That's us. That's a big deal. And we're hoping to you know, replicate that success in every shape and form in Nigeria, outside of Nigeria. Well, to the I end of time. That. That's amazing. So. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me again. And guys, thank you so much for watching. I think it's one of those videos that you just watch again. Every time a video is going to do so well, I can tell from the conversation. <laughs> and I think I almost always said, I'm like, yeah, like there's a way I feel. So I know that that's how you guys are feeling now. So just like, share, comment, um, send me your feedback as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Thank you.